Zoli, a young man with disabilities and his friend, Barba, spend all day drawing comics. Zoli is born with a different backbone that makes his legs paralyzed. He is also required to lie down for a few minutes to reduce the pain in his backbone. Zoli often makes visits to the doctor to check on his condition. His doctor says that the pain Zoli felt because of his backbone can be cured by doing a surgery. However, the surgery expense is expensive and Zoli's mother says to him that his father wants to pay for the surgery expense. Zoli refused to do surgery that was financed by his father who had abandoned him since birth after finding out that he was born with a disability. One day, Barba steals fire extinguishers and plays with Zoli in a small alley near their dorm. Suddenly, a man named Rupasov, a highly feared assassin with disability in his time, approaches them. He scolds and tells them to put the fire extinguishers back to its place. Zoli didn't accept being lectured by Rupasov, thus he follows him and they both fight. Zoli and Barba lose the fight. Rupasov waits until Zoli feels calm and he introduces himself. It turns out Rupasov is also a former firefighter. Rupasov has used a wheelchair for the past three years because of the injuries he got while doing his job. He then offers to buy them a beer in a bar. Getting inside a bar and having fun while drinking is Zoli and Barba's first experience. Besides treating drinks, Rupasov offers Zoli and Barba jobs as assassins and promises worldly pleasures as they get at the party today. He needs a car and a driver to execute his plan. Fortunately, Barba can drive a car. The three of them then agree to participate in Rupasov's plans. The next morning, Rupasov receives food and a mission from his boss, Rados, a person who raises many dogs. Then, he goes to an empty field and waits for his target there. A car comes and stops near him. Few minutes later, Zoli and Barba also arrive there. Several men got out of the car and approached him. One of them threatens Rupasov with a knife and plunges the sharp object into his thigh, but he looks normal. Rupasov says that he had been unable to feel anything in his legs since sitting in a wheelchair which provokes scornful grins from his targets. Then one of them kicks Rupasov. He then coughs and takes a plastic bag out of his pocket. It turns out that there is a gun in the plastic that he uses to shoot his targets one by one until all of them die. Zoli and Barba then help him to escape. After Rupasov manages to kill his targets, an ambulance arrives at the scene. A female medic named Zita treats the wound on Rupasov's thigh. These two turn out to know each other. Rupasov has feelings for her and wants to take her to a movie after work, but Zita refuses his invitation and tells him that she is already engaged. Rupasov is devastated that the woman he loves so much already belongs to someone else. He even tries to kill himself by throwing himself off the steps of the pedestrian bridge. However, fate hasn't allowed him to leave this world. Rupasov then comes to his senses and resumes his life. On the other hand, Rados, Rupasov's boss, who is currently walking with his dogs, suddenly gets attacked by a gangster. Luckily, it's only his hand that got shot. He then tells his dog to attack the gangster and the gangster dies. The next day, Rupasov receives a payment and a mission from Rados. He says that he must keep his job a secret and not cooperate with other people. In fact, all this time, Rupasov is often assisted by Zoli and Barba. A few days later, Rupasov meets Zoli while he is undergoing therapy on his leg in the hospital. Rupasov tells him not to help him anymore and breaks off their cooperation, but Zoli refuses and says he will still cooperate with him. Zoli then insists that he would not accept the money his father gave him and wants to finance the surgery by himself, even though his mother had persuaded him repeatedly. After he finishes training his legs, Rupasov waits for Zita in front of the hospital. He wants to give a bunch of roses to the woman he loves, but is discouraged after seeing Zita with her fiancé. Afterwards, the mission he gets earlier from Rados is to kill an official. He devises a ploy to kill the official while having lunch at a restaurant located on the side of the highway. Rupasov waits on the other side of the road while Zoli and Barba secures the situation on opposite sides to make it easier for him to carry out his action. With the help of a flock of pigeons and a crowd of passing people, Rupasov manages to complete his mission without arousing people's suspicions. While crossing the street, the official suddenly collapsed, and his body was covered in blood. His bodyguards were busy looking for the shooter, but no one would suspect three disabled men in wheelchairs. The three immediately left the scene. Rupasov later meets Zita while boarding a bus. She gives Rupasov an invitation card to attend her wedding. However from afar, Rados is watching his actions. When they meet, Rados is furious at him for breaking their rules and kicks him until he falls to the ground. Rados gives him one chance to make amends. This time Rupasov goes on a mission to kill Zoli and Barba to remove witnesses. 
He won't be paid if he doesn't succeed. The following day, Rupasov takes his two friends to go fishing in a lake. Despite having difficulty passing through the grasslands to get to their destination, the trio finally arrives at the lake and starts fishing. Barba looks overjoyed when the bait is eaten and asks for help pulling the line. Instead of helping Barba, Rupasov pushes him into the lake. Afterwards, Rupasov throws Zoli into the water and intends to leave them. However, Rupasov doesn't have the heart to let his friends drown. Finally, he plunges into the lake to save Zoli and Barba. At night, they all reconcile. Rupasov reasons that it was a prank and gives his gun to Zoli as an apology. He also promises to involve them on their last assassin mission. For the first time, Rupasov fails to complete the mission assigned to him. After returning from the lake, Rupasov then invites his friends to party at his house. He then tells them about Zita and how much he loves her. Rupasov's friends want to help him get Zita back. They also make plans. The next day, three of Rupasov's girlfriends carry him and lean him against a vehicle implying that he could stand and no longer need to use a wheelchair. Rupasov waits for Zita to come home from the hospital. However, after waiting for hours, it turns out that Zita is on leave from work. Their plan fails miserably. A few days later, Rupasov meets with Rados. He says to Rados that all of his friends are already dead and he is ready to do his last mission. Rados believes him and he gives Rupasov a gift. Rupasov then gets a mission from Rados to kill a drug dealer. Rados says he will get paid double. Rupasov accepts the mission on the condition that his current job is his last and he would no longer accept any other job offers. Rados agrees with him. However, later on, Rados manages to find out that Rupasov is lying to him when he sees Zoli and Barba are still alive. On their last assassin mission, Zoli and Barba modify their wheelchair to hide the gun. Later on, they arrive at the target's house. Rupasov tells Zoli and Barba to wait in the car and call the police if he doesn't return in 20 minutes. Rupasov acts as a person who has been summoned by the officials so that he can get into the house easily. The guards searched Rupasov's body before entering the house, even though they didn't find anything suspicious, such as a gun, and sharp objects. Thinking it was safe, the guards took him to meet with their boss in the house. Inside, the boss is aware that the official is already dead. He deliberately allows Rupasov to come inside the house to trap him. When the boss is about to kill Rupasov, he shoots him first and begins to carry out his actions. Instead of running away, the target takes his gun and engages in a shootout with Rupasov, but Rupasov is more experienced with weapons because of his profession as a hitman, even though his body is no longer perfect. With his body covered in wounds and clothes stains with blood, he finally manages to kill everyone and complete his mission, then rushes to escape from the scene. He tries to open the locked gate with difficulty but couldn't open it until Zoli and Barba come to pick him up. Suddenly, they hear police officer car sirens wailing in the distance. Zoli and Barba, who were in the car, looked panicked. Rupasov accuses Zoli of calling the police, but Zoli insists that he hasn't called the police. Zoli then took the initiative to distract the police while Barba helped Rupasov get out of the house. The three of them finally succeed in running away from the police. After what happened earlier, Rupasov still accuses Zoli that he was calling the police and they break off their friendship. Rupasov says that their money will be sent to their house. The next day, Rupasov meets with Rados to collect payment for his work. Not as usual, Rados takes Rupasov for a drive. The two of them arrive at an empty building. Rupasov senses that something is wrong with Rados' actions this time because there was a hanging rope. It turns out that Rados was aware of Rupasov's lies. He knows that his comrades are still alive. Rados is furious and disappointed in him because he had betrayed his trust. He then plans to kill Rupasov. Meanwhile, Rupasov realizes that the one who was calling the police is Rados. Afterwards, Rados forces the reins around Rupasov's neck, takes his wheelchair out and leaves the hitman alone. Rupasov tries desperately to loosen the leash around his neck while holding the toes of his shoes to keep himself from suffocating. He tries to reach his wheelchair, which is not too far from his reach. But all efforts fail. After almost giving up because his efforts are in vain, the rope knot that was wrapped around his neck finally loosened a bit. He removes the rope from his head and manages to survive. Arriving home, Rupasov immediately gathers his comrades before they get killed by Rados. He plans plotting revenge on Rados who has gone too far. The next day, Barba and his repairman friend go to Rados usual place to take his dog for a walk. Their task is to install a GPS in Rados car to find the location of his house. They manage to install it even though the repairman almost gets caught. Fortunately, he is good at lying, so Rados doesn't get suspicious of him. 
On the same day, Rupasov asks Zoli to accompany him to attend Zita's wedding. He looks dapper in a white coat and neatly tied her hair. Rupasov even took the time to show off his singing skills which earned praise from many people, including Zita. She burst into tears. But then, Rupasov suddenly kissed Zita because he couldn't let her go. Zita's husband is burned with jealousy. After the party is over, Zita's husband and his friends beat up Rupasov for ruining his wedding and also for what he has done to his wife. Zoli then comes to help Rupasov and threatens Zita's husband with a gun. He takes Rupasov away from there. The next few days, Rupasov launches his revenge against Rados. He and Zoli visit Rados' safe house and come in blatantly, while Barba lurks from outside. Rados is surprised to see Rupasov is still alive. Rupasov says that he wants to collect the wages from the previous mission that Rados hasn't paid yet and also they want to kill him. However, Rados refuses paying his wages, and threatens him that he will release his dogs to attack Rupasov and Zoli. Rupasov then pulls out his gun and fires at the fire extinguisher on the table near Rados. The dogs are frantically running outside. Rados then quickly attacks him until the gun falls. He repeatedly stabs Rupasov with a knife. Zoli manages to get Rupasov's gun, but he doesn't help his partner and lets Rados kill him to death. Zoli then kills Rados. He takes all the Rados' money from the safe, which he will later use for the cost of his leg surgery. Surprisingly, the entire incident involving Rupasov so far is just a fictional story from a comic book created by Zoli. He creates an imaginary character named Rupasov, who has the appearance of his father and a person with a disability like himself. Zoli never met his father in his entire life. He only keeps a photo of his father, who looks like Rupasov. He was inspired to make a comic involving his father and himself. Unexpectedly, the comic turns out to be loved by many people and is successfully glimpsed by publishers to great success. Zoli also sent a copy of Rupasov's comic to his father as a keepsake. From this movie, we can learn how to treat people with disabilities who are around us better. The figure of Rupasov is also the way Zoli sees his father, acts cruel on the outside, but turns out to be compassionate when Zoli realizes he's willing to pay for Zoli's surgery. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.